I, I, I spend a lot of time here on GSM Arena because it's a nice place to come to get consolidated information about the, the devices that we use on a daily basis. Primarily for me, it's, it's smartphones. In addition to asking you to subscribe, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Effordent, not just for old people. And I'm happy that the box actually says it now. Antibacterial denture and retainer cleaner. So I am very fortunate to say that I have all of my teeth and I want to keep them as straight as they are. So I personally use a retainer. I had braces back when I was a kid and for the most part, I've been pretty consistent with using my retainer every night before I go to bed, but my mouth produces a lot of either calcium or some other sediment that really starts to build up on my retainer. So using something like Effredent helps break some of that down. Also, the water here where I'm currently living is, is extremely hard, so all of those minerals start forming little deposits on the actual retainer. So again, using something like this helps in addition to routine cleaning, scrubbing, and some other things. So Effredent not just for old people. And when it comes to the release of the most recent iPhone, there was one, I mean, there's always something that bothers me, but there was one thing that bothered me in particular. And I, I mean, it's, it's good planning on Apple's part, <laughs> but at the same time as a consumer, it's like, mm, that really strikes a nerve with me. So let's go back in time briefly. And it's really all about the A series chip that we find in the iPhone. Going back to the, uh, the iPhone 12 series and the 13, which is what we have on the screen, what you would expect to see is that year over year, there's a chip change, a, a chip upgrade from one iteration of the iPhone to the next. So 12's on the right, 13 all on the left. And if we scroll down, we can see did I already pass it? Yes, I did. The chipset for the 13 is the A15 Bionic, while the chipset for the 12 series is the A14 Bionic, which is, that, that, that's what you would expect. So back when the 12s came out, whether it was a pro or non-pro, it was the same chip. And the next year, it got upgraded to the A15. So let's remember that. The iPhone 13 has the A15. But if we come over to the Apple iPhone, I don't know why I said Apple iPhone. If we come over to the iPhone 14, we scroll down and the 13 Pro is what's in the center. We scroll down and it looks like the iPhone 14 also has the exact same chipset, which is interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> so, and let's see, uh, what did they do for the Pro? We have the Pro on the next screen. And I'm sorry, I'm a little out of order here, but the Pro iPhone 14 Pro actually did get upgraded to the A16. Ugh, all these numbers, 15, 16, whatever. So the whole point I'm showing here is that there was one year where, the, where Apple decided to say, you know what, this chip is good enough that we don't need to change it for next year's base model iPhone. So the Pro, the 14 Pro, did get the A16 Bionic but the regular 14 stuck with the A15. And then that's where they created that little delineation. So we come over here, back here, and yes, that means for the next year, the regular 15, which is right here, got the A16, just like it's its previous year's Pro device. So again, the, 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 the year, the difference between the regular and the Pro was, oh, we're going to give this year's regular last year's pro chip. Sorry that it, I didn't do a better job of, of explaining that, but for a couple of years it was, we're going to give this year's regular phone the previous year's pro chip. And then if you go back further, there was that one year where they just flat out didn't change. Now, I was honestly interested to see what was going to happen as a result of what they did last year, because last year, and I'm sorry I didn't include it, I should have, but 15 Pro, let's go ahead and type that in. So what did they do? Not only did they give it a new chip, they had to call it something different. So the 15 Pro was called, sorry, yeah, the 15 Pro received the A17 Pro. So seeing what Apple had been doing for the past couple of years, I was like, okay, so there's no A17 chip. 
So how are they going to address the following year's device, which would be the, the, the iPhone 16 series of phones? But what they did with this A17 Pro, this phone also got USB-C and some other things. But let's watch what he said when they announced the A17 Pro chip. Typing more accurately with autocorrect, lifting a subject from a photo background, or creating a personal voice for users at risk of speech loss. A17 Pro has dedicated engines that enable Pro features. Those include the ProRes codec and a display engine that powers ProMotion and the always-on display. We also include... So two features, the ProRes codec, whatever. I think that has more so to do with the camera, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. But the Pro Display Engine allowing for ProMotion. So instead of just saying high refresh rates, they've had to put a name, a, 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 a proprietary name, I'll call it, a trademark name to high refresh rate. So if it's called Pro something, it can't come to the regular device. So that's okay. And then also the always on display, which both of those baffle me that somehow Apple gets away with, 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 with these are just flat out shenanigans. Oh, you want high refresh rate? Okay, you have to spend more money. Meanwhile, the competition in the Mac, I, uh, tablet and phone space, like the competition, th th yeah, they, they just give us these things because there's no reason to tag a moniker of pro to any of them. So knowing that these things are in or are part of the A17 Pro chip, I was like, hey, what, what are they going to do? How are they going to just say, well, we created an A17 next year for the 16 series of, of phones? Like they, they had to do something. And there's one other thing, and, and let's, let, let, let's hit on that real fast. A dedicated AV1 decoder, enabling more efficient and high quality video experiences for streaming services. iPhone 15 Pro also has the new USB-C connector, but for our Pro models, we included a new USB controller in A17 Pro that enables new workflows not possible before. And that, <laughs> that's the, the, the last part of the chip that I'm just like, that's, that's really what we're doing. We're saying that USB 3 is a Pro level feature, and I've made plenty of videos about this before, but since the these uh, iPhone 16 series of phones are out, I just I was like, man, what are they going to do? They like, yeah, they can't give last year's chip to this year's regular iPhone. They just they can't do it because they've decided to add these these little silly things that should be commonplace on not only just I'd say modern devices, but you know all flagship devices. And even though the the regular iPhone is does not have a pro moniker it is by no means not a flagship so usb3 high refresh rate always on display no reason that in 2024 and last year even in 2023 and 2022 that their devices don't have those things so of course what did apple do and this is everybody saying oh um and then you know this is the a18 pro just showing all of those same things pro motion to support always on display faster usb3 speeds everything that was mentioned last year is also a part of this chip so instead of giving uh this year's regular iphone 16 last year's chip they skipped the regular a17 and just gave this year's phone the a18 <laughs> and you know, you, you, you hear people say, oh, well, yeah, you, you, they've skipped two generations, so the base model iPhone is significantly better. I would have much rather have gotten an A17 Pro, which I know you can't because they put the freaking Pro on it for, you know, you can't do it. So why am I making this video? I mean, I'm not buying this phone. I'm just pointing out the fact that these are just commonplace shenanigans. Commonplace shenanigans. And I, I know I'm all over the place. I could have could have done this a lot better. But if I could summarize, in the past, when after you know Apple started creating a pro device, the pro phone got the same chip as the regular phone. And then every year they would upgrade. Then one year, Apple said, hey, this year's chip 
is good enough for next year's regular phone. So we're not going to up, upgrade the, the chip in the regular phone, but we will upgrade the chip in the pro phone for, for next year. So now there was some stagnation. So then for a few years, it was, okay, this year's regular phone gets essentially last year's pro chip. But then last year with the iPhone 15 Pro, they gave it the A17 Pro chip. They added Pro to it to include these features. And now because they've they've added Pro to some of these names, we can't be a part of and, and, and Pro to the name of the actual chip. <laughs> you can't just slap that chip in this year's iPhone 16. And because you can't do that, you lose these features. So the top three, what I really care about um, and yeah, so yeah, good kudos to Apple. I mean, yeah, they planned this. Yeah, oh, let's put Pro on it. And now we can't give it to the regular guys. And now, yeah, we'll, we'll say that we're doing them a solid by upgrading the chip by two generations. Cool, man, whatever. I, I would rather have Blast Your Chip in this base phone. And before I know I'm 10 minutes in, somebody's going to say, which, I mean, it's true that the A17 Pro chip was developed on TSMC. I want to say it was a variant of their three nanometer, but it wasn't the second generation three nanometer, which supposedly is significantly better. So yeah, that was kind of a, a done deal when they made it. They knew it was kind of a one and done thing. And Apple just wanted to say, well, we have the most powerful chip. So we want that, even though we know that next year's architecture is going to be significantly better. Um, and had they, I guess, stuck with the previous node, it, I guess, would have still been four nanometer. But then they could they have just slapped Pro on that? I, I don't know. All that to say that these particular features right here, it sucks that you don't get them on the regular iPhone. But it's Apple, so so what do you expect? I continue to use my Android devices, and I am not loyal to a brand. It's more of a, this phone actually does what I want it to do. So regardless of what other people's experiences are, uh, I'm going to use what actually makes me happy. So I hope you do the same thing.